Natasha uh, came to us over the, uh, the summer last year as an undergraduate research student and she's since um, stayed on as a uh, graduate research student doing a PhD with her. I uh, found out that ASU had um, the solar power labs and was doing research in the area um, together with the fact that ASU has the largest installed capacity of any university in the world when it comes to solar PV. I decided that um, this was the place I wanted to do my research. Natasha started out with us doing research onto making higher efficiency silicon solar cells. So it was really important, I think, that Natasha was able to uh, look at not only the device physics inside the laboratory, but also take those devices out into the real world and look at how they're performing on the top of the car parks, on top of the buildings. The energy demand is increasing at a rapid pace. If we could supply that um, extra energy demand that's going to be required in the future with clean renewable energy, that is a step forward. In order to do that, we're going to have to create a lot more energy generation systems. And the most promising way to do that is with photovoltaics. Sunlight's an inexhaustible resource, there's huge amounts of it, and what we need is ways that we can convert that sunlight into electricity efficiently and cheaply. With solar energy, it's clean and renewable. We'll be able to displace fossil fuels, which are already running short and are polluting our environment. In the US, we don't think about um, electricity. We, it's always there, it's always on. But in most of the world, that's not really the case. And so what we'd like to see is the rest of the world be able to get the same sort of benefits from you know, electricity and, and part of a modern society that we have in the US. Technology is changing, and we need to uh, come up with better ways to model these, um, these solar cells. She's looking at ways how can we take the current silicon solar cells, which are most of the industry at the moment, and make them just a bit better. So making those better makes them available to more people, more people can afford them, so that they you know, have more access to the electricity. For me to be successful at my research, I feel like I need some kind of different outlet. I have also been, been an athlete at ASU uh, for the past um, four and a half years. She's very committed. Um, she's highly disciplined. She understands that improving in our sport isn't just about what you do at practice, whether it's recovery, diet, uh, you know, just sleeping patterns, strengthening, physio work, making sure you keep your body healthy. Natasha's really embodied that. Her diligence to the process of improving is, is really uh, remarkable. Training myself hard mentally um, when I'm doing my research and train, training myself hard physically when I'm, when I'm out there running. So I feel like it really provides a good balance. You have to be very committed, you have to be very disciplined, and as strange as it sounds, you have to find some joy in the monotony of it. It's really about being able to endure and, and being consistent over a long period of time through, through the good and the bad. Uh, and finding a way to stay positive in that process. And I think that that skill set that you develop through distance running is really applicable into every area of your life. Being a runner and being outdoors all the time, I definitely appreciate you know, the clean environment. And uh, it's something that, um, that's become a, a passion of mine. Natasha graduated as an you know, undergrad with a 4.0 through our Barrett Honors College in Sustainability and Mechanical Engineering. Those are two pretty rigorous academic programs. And she also ran upwards of 80, 90 miles a week, uh, practiced every day at 5.30 in the morning. So I think for successful people, they find a way. Students involved in our research is, is just really important. There's nothing like having a dedicated, enthusiastic student in our, in our lab. They can usually take ideas and they can really work on that um, and take it from the lab, from just an idea, from a concept, to being an actual physical device. I really want to see the health of the environment be maintained uh, while at the same time you know, meeting our energy demands.